we're at the Civic Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. Preseason number one, Kentucky, taking on from the ACC, the Maryland Terrapins. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers along with Clark Kellogg, and welcome to the Hall of Fame Tip-Off Classic. The matchup we've got tonight, not exactly what you'd expect to be a defensive struggle, <laughs> should be high-scoring affair, partner. It certainly should be. Both of these teams love to press and trap and play the wide-open game. As a former player and as a fan, it's the ideal way to play and also the best way to watch a game. It'll be analogous to having a 100 Pentium chip computer. This thing will be fast, and right now it's time to go rack to rack. Clark is in the house. I know I'm ready to go. Mario Lucas, the only new starter for Gary Williams starting his seventh season. That is alma mater. So those four, Simpkins Road, Hip, and Booth, all tons of experience. The new starter for Rick Pitino, also in his seventh season, at Kentucky, Derek Anderson. No rookie by any means, though, when it, you talk about starting lineups. Transfer from Ohio State, Pitino loves what he brings to their athletic style of pressuring the opposition all the time. So Maryland and Simpkins control it. Off the tip, and we are underway at the Hall of Fame tip-off classic. Man-to-man -man pressure regularly from Kentucky. Joe, they'll double down on that low post player, probably from the top. Batted away on Rhodes for his try of the game. It still belongs to the Terrapins with 18 left on the shot clock. At the shoot-around shoot this morning, as I watch Kentucky get ready for tonight's game, they talk about doubling down, and they double with the purpose of stealing the basketball. Nice kick out. And a hip collects. x ray hip with a three to start it off. In this type of game, Joel, you have to make basketball plays. That means you have to pass it, catch it, move it, find the open guy, and then make your shots. Kentucky will pressure you to the point where you won't be able to really run your half-court offense. Antoine Walker at the other end with a two-pointer. A one-point contest early. Antoine Walker, the sophomore from Mount Carmel High School in Chicago, came out so strongly at the end of last year. Rhodes gets away. No containment. So they went over top of the press. And an early three-point lead now for Maryland. play solid man-to-man -man defense and both teams have an aggressive attacking posture and mentality Walker evens it up so Walker with the first five for the Kentucky Wildcats oh he was fabulous all summer long beat the press and Lucas charges the center Mario Lucas senior from Memphis there are a couple of ways you can attack pressure Joel you can get it to the middle and bounce past it, or just go over the top. Hope late getting to it, and Johnny Rose probably with an, as easy a deuce as he'll get tonight. So now pressure at the other end, the Terrapins of Maryland. Now their pressure a little different than Kentucky's in that they really don't look to steal. They want to eat some shot clock. They want to disrupt you and make you get into your offense late in the half court. Backed off in a hurry, so only token pressure. Delk's first try this year offensively. Nice dribble penetration by Tony Delk. And again they break it right in front of us as Rhodes gets away and he finishes. Excellent body control there to go in on the nice jump stop, the two-foot stop, and take it right to the rim. A charge on Delk, trying it nicely. It's Dwayne Simpkins. Joel, if they keep hooping like this, I will never get into my popcorn. <laughs> I'll never get there. <laughs> Used a lot of shot clock already, partner, My haven't they? My goodness. <laughs> I just love these they slow down are, games. Boy, they are on rollerblade. Constant pressure, as always. That's a trademark of Rick Pitino's squads. And I tell you what, if you're a player, I mean, I'm almost ready to scrap mine up now, Joe, because you're going to get opportunities to play. You're going to go. You're going to be able to go to the rack. You're going to be able to create. I mean, this is, this is tremendous here, Earl. Lucas giving Maryland once again a two-point lead. Sounds to me like you'd like to play for Gary Williams or Rick Pitino. Either one of those guys I could have easily played for. It's Ron Mercer with the ball. Top of the nation. Gets it inside, and Pope is rejected. Mario Lucas, and at the other end, Booth tries to finish. Lucas is there with a bottle. Little action early. And a timeout called by Pitino in Kentucky. It is going to be, well, we keep it here. Is it going to be a 20? 
Yes, a 20-second timeout call. A new rule in college basketball this year, although that guy has coached at the NBA level, so very much familiar with the 20-second timeout. Not too happy with this full-court pressure here early. They've been beaten for layups. Talked to Gary Williams earlier, and he said, we're going to attack it for layups. Great defense typically initiates an opportunity at the other end. The block, the look ahead, the missed shot, but in transition, because the defense isn't back, you've got an opportunity to get that second shot. And Mario Lucas steps in nicely there. Maryland last year winning the second most games in school history and Gary Williams sixth year at his alma mater. They have the early four-point lead now over Kentucky. Tried the sideline trap. Dealt free. And coming over the back of Lucas already two early fouls now on Tony Delk. So Maryland doing it at both ends of the floor. Staying at home, getting the rebound, and already an early substitution. Wayne Turner coming in for Delk. The only loss, and a big one, the number one pick in the NBA draft by the Golden State Warriors, Joe Smith, after his sophomore season for Gary Williams. You never replace a player like that. What Maryland hopes to do is to ride the experience and toughness of the four starters that have started pretty much from day one in the program. And then you try to get a center by committee with Mario Lucas, Obina Ikizi, who will step in. Great penetration there by Simpkins. And Booth helped him out, tried to get the entry pass. He also sealed off the defender on that side. So now the largest lead by either side, Maryland on top by six. Mercer. Turner wanted it. Simpkins has it, leads the three on one. Last touch by Mercer, but a three-on-one, you've got to finish. You know, the number one team has not fared well here. Arkansas got Blitzkrieg last year by UMass. And Kentucky has played here twice before and has yet to come away with the win in this Springfield Classic. And the expectations as you look at McCarty coming in, uh, very high for this Kentucky club. Drop off for Booth. Rebound there, and it counts. What a play, and all in a sweeping motion. The guard, Johnny Rhodes, inside with the follow. Here early, Maryland is just more active. They're more aggressive. They're more energized on the glass. Here you see Booth taking the little 15-footer, and there's Rhodes, one of the best rebounding guards in the country throughout his career. This guy has averaged five rebounds a game at 6'4", from the, and he's just a player, Joe. I mean, you think about what he's able to do. He steals the ball, he defends, and you can mark him down for like 15 to 20 points tonight, four to five boards, three to four assists, and good defense and a couple of steals. Nine-point lead for the Terrapins. Turner with a penetration off the bench. Pope going after the loose one, and Pope gets it. Mark Pope, another transfer a couple of years ago from the University of Washington. Pressure's not been a problem early, Clark, for Maryland at all. Well, they've got a guy who can break it with the dribble in Dwayne Simpkins, and then the other times they've broken it, they've just gone over the top. Maryland yet to make a substitution. Double so far for Kentucky. Hit for three. That was NBA three-point range, and Pope and McCarty don't communicate and give it right back to the Terrapins. What a start for the team that's picked to win the ACC this year in the preseason bowl. The Maryland Terrapins up early on Kentucky. Classic, brilliant, because Clark and I love it. <laughs> Nobody's looking over to the coach like, what half-court set do you want me to run? <laughs> They're just up and down the floor. Talk about experience. Yeah. Four starters back from Maryland. X-ray hip has never missed a start. Yeah, and you talk about experience, and you hear coaches talk about it. You hear us as commentators talk about it. But it's invaluable. You really can't measure it, especially in a game like this. You're playing against a team that's athletic and deep. Well, that experience, especially in the backcourt, allows you to get out and make plays and, and do positive things. So Maryland with the fresh shot clock. Right now, Maryland with a 6-1 rebounding edge. Rhodes, seven already. Rhodes with the ball. The fall away, I love it. What a stroke. Bring it. What a stroke. Johnny Rhodes. <laughs> nine for Rhodes now. And a nine-point lead for the second time this evening for Maryland. Mercer, his second try at three. He's 0 for 2, and he'll start his Kentucky career. They look for the transition. Both teams constantly. Simpkins finds the opening. 
Lucas, but Booth is there. What an athlete. And Booth gets the roll. They are so active right now, that, beating Kentucky to the punch. You called it, Joel. They are quicker. Rebounding is about quickness and timing and positioning more than it is size. Kentucky can't find a three-point range, and it batted away. And Anderson tried to put it back inside. You know, Rick Pitino, concerned about his team's defense in the preseason exhibition games, and clearly there have been some holes in terms of the opportunities Maryland has gotten, especially on the black backboard after their first shot. Another look on the glass as Pope rejected that try by Rhodes. You take a look, a shot up, and then there's Booth beating everybody to the orange, and then a good move here, although he may have gotten away with a little shuffle of the feet, but still excellent work by Keith Booth, who knows how to play inside despite giving up usually two to three inches when he gets down in that paint against the opposition. Zipkins, tough break. Got a foul underneath the shove there. It's called on Booth. That's his first foul. You know, another point I, I'd like to make is that Maryland recognizes that everybody expects them to not be very good because they lose Joe Smith, the number one player drafted last year. That type of incentive with an experienced, tough-minded team is sometimes enough to get them to come together and really be an impressive club. Edwards off the bench, missing his for his try, but Antoine Walker there to put it back. I like what you talked about earlier, though. The four there, the intangibles that they bring to the floor. The experience that, hey, we can win. We've done it before. Sure. Nice behind the back look. Lucas wasn't ready for that one. Just 100 mile an hour fastball, and it goes back on the turnover to Kentucky. But don't forget, right after our Hall of Fame tip-off classic here in Springfield, the championship of the preseason NIT at Madison Square Garden. It's number 19, Arizona, taking on Georgetown. It's all slated for 9.30 Eastern, right after we wrap it up here in Springfield, Mass. Well, you talk about a team looking quite well early in the season. Actually, two teams. I think Arizona and Georgetown both very impressive in their first few games. Wayne Turner forcing the issue. And Rhodes with the rebound. Reggie Geary with a new role for Arizona. He's doing a great job. Go! The bomb! Oh, oh, oh! And he's coming over the back of Kentucky's Jeff Shepard. Oh! Wipe it off, but what a bomb. Touchdown. They called that a no-good goal? You liked it. Oh, let's I liked take it. a peek. <laughs> nice find here by Simpkins. Oh, that's a play. They, they got to play on, Joe. You're going after the ball there. Oh, yeah, you got to let this. Oh, yeah, that's that's above the rim action. That's got to be a play on. So you want to see that official put the flag back in his pocket. Exactly. Inadvertent. Exactly. And this is a strong, very good crew. Jody Sylvester, Ted Valentine, Art McDonald. McCarty banged just a little bit by the freshman, Ophina Ikezi. Young man from Nigeria who goes at 6'10", 250. His first, the fourth on the Terrapins. So Kentucky with the ball. 13-12 left in the opening 20 minutes of play. Kentucky down by nine. And on the baseline, couldn't get in bounds quickly enough. Allen Edwards and another turnover. Trying to make something happen too quickly there before the play had developed. Simpkins asking for the clear out. I'll take it one-on-one -on -one with Edwards. Walker trying to help out. That's why strong point guard play is so important, especially when you face a team like Kentucky that's going to press. You see what Simpkins did there. Just back up, guys. I'll get through. Rhodes finding help, but you've got a block away. Booth called on the pick play. The moving screen. Good idea, though. And good movement again without the ball. Excellent call, Joe. Good spacing. Booth gets, gets called. I think that's Keith's second. They can ill afford to lose him. He's been prone to foul difficulty a lot of times because he is giving up that two or three inches against the opposing team's big forward. I love guys that are 6'5 and play like 6'9. Right, six right. Play bigger, bigger, bigger than they are. Huge yeah. motor, big mm -hmm. ticker. Mm -hmm. Still a nine-point deficit for Kentucky with the ball. They have been very cold from beyond the arc to start the contest. Walker got his man to commit, but Ikezi comes over for the rejection. One of the things to watch is what kind of play Gary Williams gets from his bench, guys. Ikezi walking. 
He was enthusiastic after what he did at the opposite end of the floor. From Nigeria, loves Akeem Olajuwon. Here you take a look, imitating Olajuwon with that denial inside. And then he walked at the other end. But in the course of this game, because it will be up tempo and fast pace, depth will become a factor. It's important that the Maryland guys off the bench contribute in a positive way. Allen Edwards trying to drive the baseline, lost it again, the sophomore from Miami. The home run ball for Rhodes. Rhodes with Pope back has it taken away. Pope with a big play. Nice to see the big man in transition like that. Good recovery. Now to walk, Pope hit the center. I'm sorry, Clark, but I got to say it hit the center. In the transition, he's the trailer. Thank you. Another turnover for Kentucky. He's doing a two-step. He should have sat right there. Nine-point lead for Maryland inside of 12 minutes left in the half. High school in Florida up over Charleston, South Carolina. We'll update this one at half. Let's go back to Princeton. All right, Carl, so a transition year, as you mentioned, for Lon Kruger and the Florida Gators, but some good-looking young talent. Maryland right now on top by nine. Joel Myers along with Clark Kellogg in Springfield, Massachusetts. Maryland getting a lot of points early, beating the, the uh, press. Exactly. There you see the shooting percentage, 9 of 16, over 50%. Kentucky a little tentative. And always, when you look at shooting percentage, you have to think about the kinds of shots a team is getting. Maryland getting an awful lot of stuff against the press and in the paint. Rick Pitino took over the program in 89, the same year that Gary Williams headed from Ohio State back to his alma mater. A number of similarities in terms of the style of play, the approach of these coaches, their philosophy. I mean, it's amazing. You look at what their teams have averaged in their tenure at their respective schools, right about 86, 87 points a game. Jessica Vicious off the bench for the first time, a perimeter player for Maryland. He can spot up and shoot it. Rhodes looking for a second three. And Pope with the rebound. And Lucas called for the foul. Lucas thought, wait a minute, I thought Shepard was knocking me out of the way. On Lucas, his second. So two fouls now for Lucas and Booth. Two big men for Maryland. They are not all that deep. Exactly. Down on the blocks. Shepard really came on strong the other man with the ball last year, the second half of the season. Taken away the strip from behind. Heads up play by Johnny Rose. Mm -hmm. Simpkins can't capitalize. And Walker out of bounds. Good pressure over there from Rodney Elliott to force him out on the sideline. Mm -hmm. and, right, and, and I think Antoine was waiting for the whistle to blow and get the foul called, but you never stop playing waiting for the whistle. You always play on, and then if you get the whistle, you get it. So now almost like a three-guard set with Rhodes and Simpkins still out there, but Jessica Vicious off the bench. Kentucky showing his own. They'll mix it up a little bit. Rhodes is a great leaper, but Simpkins thought he was about 6'10 there. Maryland has not scored now for the last four minutes. Still, though, they're on top by nine. Yes. In for the first time, Anthony Epps, the junior from Lebanon, Kentucky. Turnovers almost identical. Oh, left free. The senior from Bellevue, Washington. Good high-low action that time. Anytime you can swing the ball, get it to the middle of the floor, that interior post player has a chance to seal and get the lob. Last touch by a Pope, but a huge mistake by Jessica Vicious to go over to the sideline and give up the dribble. Easy trap. That pressure will be constant as we look at Pope. See, he seals Mario Lucas there. And off, off the catch, it's an easy deuce in there. Good work by Mark Pope inside. Like Kentucky and Riani last year. Lucas, can he walk? Yes. Another turnover for the Terrapins. So now it's about five minutes that they have not been able to come up with a single point. After sprinting out to that nine-point advantage, opportunity for Epps and Kentucky. Derek Anderson asked for it. Nice. Mm. Quick release. Good quick sit down in the post, too, by Anderson. Flashed in there and then sealed his defender and went right to work. Anderson had a perfect preseason. As Elliott saves it, they almost throw it away. It turns into a three on two. Oh. Yep. 
and the rebound for Anderson. That's seven straight shots missed now as Pope oh, recovers nicely. <laughs> the reverse from the big guy. Six points for Pope takes us to a timeout for Maryland and only a 20-second timeout. They need it. Yeah, they do. We talked about Derek Anderson being a stat sheet stuffer. This guy has tremendous all-around ability, and in the two preseason games, Joe, he scored 44 points in 33 minutes of action. Here we only one shot. Exactly. Here we take a look at him. Did a nice job here. A quick flash here. Catch and finish. So he just beat hip to the spot and then the nice release. And then in transition, always looking to make the pass. Excellent sequence by Derek Anderson. A deuce and a dime. Back to back. Well, Derek Anderson out of Doss High School in Louisville, he was headed to the Cardinals program for Denny Crum until Jimmy Jackson mm -hmm. left Ohio State early. Here's honorable mention all Big Ten's final season with the Buckeyes. Decided to transfer from Louisville. The Buckeyes went through some difficulties with some guys leaving school, and Anderson felt that he would be best suited heading back closer to home. And talked to him earlier today, and he said he's happy to be in Kentucky. Some nifty moves by Simpkins. And it pays off with X-ray hip following it up. What a great point guard. Wayne Simpkins, we're going to foul. Hope is being held underneath by Elliott. Take a look. Pope going to leave and try to help out defensively. And then there's the nice lead by Simpkins and a tough shot by x ray Hip. Simpkins set it all up. Now Pope, as Elliott picks up his first foul. Pope will go to the line. Shooting the one and one. Bono situation early with 9-14 left of the half. Mark Pope with the point has seven now. Big fella has a nice touch. And there's a little mechanical in the post, but nonetheless, Rick Pitino feels like he's their best post player. He's got good moves down there. Problems bringing it in. Finally get it to Lucas. Need to find Simpkins. That's the key. And Simpkins is walking. Elliott didn't put him in a great spot to exactly, begin with. Exactly, Joel. Just took my thought right away, but you're exactly right, partner. That turnover will go to Simpkins, but Rodney Elliott is the culprit by giving the guy the ball where he's not able to really do anything with it. So here you take a look. Elliott not reading the defense. See, he only looked at Epps and didn't recognize that Shepard was stepping in. Kentucky right now with the ball currently on a 9-3 run after trailing by 9 with a 3 they can tie it up with 9 minutes left in the half. Epps will try to do that and it's all even. The thing about this style of play for both teams, both teams have what I call spurtability. In other words, you're going to see runs because the nature and pace of the game will dictate teams getting on runs on occasion. We have not seen them try to throw over the trap in the backcourt yet with a long pass. And part of that is because Kentucky, I think, has made the adjustment. They've tightened it up now. They've gone to a little bit of a smaller lineup. McCarty taking up for Pope. He's not the wide body that Pope is. Shepard, the great look to Pope, and actually they go with the two on the floor at the same time, McCarty and Pope. Well, that's one thing Kentucky can give you, Joel. They can give you a number of different looks. The break is there for Lucas. He'll go to the line to shoot two as Caps didn't want to give him the uncontested one. Kentucky can flip-flop lineups, and they have so many interchangeable parts. They can create a lot of matchup problems for the opposition. Here we take a look. Shepard in the open court. Nice look as Lucas late getting back, and Pope with an easy one at the rack. Kentucky this year truly how many coaches can say that they are 11 or 12 deep yeah they're very deep you know Rick Pitino had talked about possibly redshirting a couple of players Jared Prickett maybe Oliver Simmons maybe even Alan Edwards but I'm on the Italy tour they took as a team this summer Alan Edwards um, in, in Rick Pitino's words was their best player so he, he decided not to redshirt anybody that's bad news for the, their opponents Pitino said that that 
Italian experience was great for his squad. There's the takeaway by Johnny Rhodes, leaving the transition. Simpkins leaving it off for Booth. They grew real close mm -hmm. as a team. He said it was phenomenal for team chemistry. And you can never underestimate that, Joe. Chemistry is so critical in terms of getting the most out of your team's potential. One point lead for Kentucky. Yeah, kept out of the way by Walker. Or make it Anderson, rather. Anderson with the foul. X Ray Hip, the senior from Washington, D.C. Terrell Stokes now a pure point, and many considered the best pure point in high school basketball in the nation last year, in for the first time. Has only practiced about a week and a half, had back spasms, missed a good portion of the preseason workouts, and has just now started to get himself into basketball shape. Much needed blow for Simpkins. Has he ever done a great job as they can use the backcourt? Simpkins on the bench now. Let's see how long he stays over there for Gary Williams with this kind of pressure from Kentucky. And Stokes, all we're talking about working the lead guard spot. She Booth has to turn and face him. He has to turn and face. Swing the ball. The ball has to be swung against that double teaming pressure. Well, we're breaking new ground, partner. First time either side has gone inside of 10 of the shot clock. Well, Maryland has struggled to get good looks the last few times, so they feel like they need to slow it down a little bit. Allen Edwards stepping it away to control the rebound. Anderson looking for Pope. The big guy. Check that. Pope out of there now. In for the first time. Jared Brickett getting to it. Brickett after the McCarty miss. Has it stripped away from behind by Stokes and a blocking foul. It'll be Anderson. Anderson's second foul. And that'll take us to a timeout. So a wild beginning. Maryland stagnant offensively, but they are only down by a point. 7-10 left of the first half. Kentucky with a one-point lead over the Maryland Terrapins. A little more than seven minutes left in the first half. Well, it's the NFL on ESPN Sunday night. Carol and Kerry Collins, Carolina, taking on Jim Everett. And the New Orleans Saints. It's Carolina, one of the great success stories, the expansion Panthers, trying to get to the 500 mark right here on ESPN, 8 o'clock Eastern, this coming Sunday night. Joel Myers along with Clark Kellogg. A phenomenal beginning for Gary Williams, Maryland Terrapins, over the first 10 minutes of the game, but... They have gone ice cold from the outside over the last three to four, down by a point after leading twice by as many as nine. Got off to the great start, a lot of adrenaline flowing, and shots were coming easily. Kentucky's made some adjustments now, have gotten tougher defensively. Maryland looking to work the shot a little, shot clock a little bit, and make Kentucky play D. They just got to get some outside shots to go. Pressure D from Kentucky as usual. Booth didn't get the call. He thought he was shoved early. Pope got the block, though. Pope's back in there, and Lucas saves it off McCarty. Well, I think Keith Booth has to turn and face the bigger guy guarding him. If he tries to continue to back guys down, he's giving up He's giving up his strength, which is being able to face guys and beat them off the bounce. And then you get the weak side guy like mm -hmm. Pope coming over to put it back into his face. Exactly. Kip doing it on his own. Can't finish. Mercer with the rebound for Epps. So Ron Mercer, after sitting down for quite some time, back onto the floor. McCarty, well, the book on McCarty, he's had many more memorable threes than dunks in his Wildcat career. You can see why he likes to go outside. Yeah, he's a versatile big guy, long and angular. He suffered a sprained ankle a couple of weeks ago and is just now getting back to 100%. But he's a guy that can block shots, finish on the break, and shoot the three. Put on 60 pounds. Four years ago, he came to Kentucky at 170. Weighs a little more than 230 now. Sounds like X re Hip. He came to Maryland at 167. I talked to him earlier today. He's at 220 now, about 225. And seems to handle the weight well. And some of that weight gain is natural as guys mature and, and get older. And then New York, you combine that with some work in the weight room, and you can put on significant weight. Alan Edwards committing the foul to the opposite end of the floor as Booth hits the first. 11-point average for Booth last year with eight boards a game. Plus. Junior from Dunbar High School in Baltimore. And he gets both free throws. So Maryland back on top, partner. I sense that if Maryland can just tread water here, just kind of hold the fort, they'll be in good shape coming into the second half. 
Kentucky, the key. Kentucky trying to wear them out with their depth and the, and the constant, constant pressure. And you know, not only does that wear you down physically, but mentally it starts to wear you down. It starts to gnaw and grate at you a little bit because they're always in your face. Ikezi, the freshman from Nigeria, back into the game for the second time for Gary Williams. He's been backing up Mario Lucas during practices. There was some speculation that Elliott would be the first off the bench, but no, it is Ikezi at the center position. Rhodes did have the post up against the younger man, Mercer. Mercer at 6'7", though. He's got a couple of inches on Rhodes. Kentucky has gone to this matchup zone in the half court, and it's given Maryland problems. Stokes with the penetration. Kisses it perfectly. He went all the way up on top of the glass. The first two points of his Maryland Terrapin career. Mercer for three, and Mercer's on the board. The first points of his Kentucky Wildcat career. They say he's got the whole package, Joel. He's kind of like premium cable. I mean, you get all the extras with him. And you get the Disney Channel. Nothing scrambled. That's right. That's right. He's got, he's got that kind of a game. There's guys with basic cable games, you know, real fundamental solid. Then there's basic cable plus, and then there's premium, which is just... Just, just off the chart. He's the premium package, there's no doubt. Nice entry. Akizi got it from Stokes, the young man we're talking about. But Akizi had to show the soft hands to go down and get it. Now he's a young, he, he, he's young to the game of basketball. He's only played a few years and has potential. Only three plus years for Akizi. So still learning the game as Maryland leads it by two. Terrell Stokes. Running things nicely from the point guard spot. Akizi. Actually, this is Terrell just going to the rack here. Fighting the shot clock against the zone. He gets two for himself there. And then there's Akizi. See, Mercer tried to go over the other side. Good sit down. Use that nice lower body of his to get it inside. We were just talking about Kentucky chemistry as Epps goes to the line. Shooting. One of the bonus, and he's got the bonus now. Uh, one of the real difficult aspects for Gary Williams this year is chemistry because he's got four returning starters. He's got the best beer point guard in high school basketball in the nation last year, Stokes, who just sat down. We've already seen some great plays for him. You don't want to bruise egos because you've got four guys back. Mm -hmm. How do you mesh in the kids? Well, I think you just blend them in evenly, recognizing that the seniors are going to get most of the minutes, and then as the younger players show that they need to be on the floor, you find minutes for them. A hold on the press, another foul on Kentucky, and the second on Allen Edwards. So Maryland back to the free throw line. So now Simpkins just off the bench, going to the strike. And don't forget to join us tomorrow. College game day begins our college football weekend on ESPN. It all begins at 11 o'clock Eastern. We've got a great doubleheader tomorrow. Penn State, Michigan State. It'll begin at 3.30, and then the nightcap. Syracuse and Miami at the Orange Bowl. As Miami is one of the better stories in the second half of the season. So college football all begins with game day. Chris Fowler in the gang tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Another thing you like about Simpkins, he handles the ball, runs your club for you. He's an 80% career free throw. You love that in your point guard. Late in games, he's the guy that has the ball an awful lot and can be confident in his ability to knock down clutch free throws. Southpaw gets a couple there. Maryland back up by a deuce. Shepard back in off the bench. Multiple substitutions constantly as usual for Patino. Maryland now showing a little matchup zone. Trying to keep some people out of foul trouble. Booth and Lucas both have two. The kick out. Shepard has the three-pointer. Give it to Epps on the assist. He had the nice penetration to create that space on the right side. Seventh lead change now as Kentucky has a slim one-point advantage. Get walked with it after he got it from Booth. That's a catch and shoot. That's a catch and shoot there, Joel. He didn't need the bounce. Another turnover. We've seen plenty of those, but you're going to see him in a game where two teams like to get it up and down the way these two do. And remember, it's early now. This is their first game, so you can't expect teams to be in midseason form at this juncture. Maryland stays in the zone. Pope outside shows his perimeter game. 
The big fella can stroke it from behind the arc now. 48% from behind the arc last season. He got a lot of confidence last year when he was named for the all-tournament team at the SEC championships as its last touch by a hip belongs to Kentucky once again. Pope, though, only averaged data game last year. He's got 13 already tonight. Been very active after a slow start defensively, but offensively been very active. The big fellow going to work. First 10 minutes of the game belong to Maryland. The last six and a half, they belong to Kentucky. The Cats are up by four. We're going to take a look at Mark Pope. He'll be highlighted. He's actually in the paint. Now look at him slip outside and find some open space. And when you play for Kentucky, if you get close to that three-point line, you better get behind it. Otherwise, Rick will have you out of there. He wants the three or nothing when you're that close to the line. And look what he did from back there last year, 48%. And he's having an outstanding first half. Kentucky 5 of 8 behind the line. Maryland only one of six, though, on their three-point tries, and I believe that was their very first one. It was from Hip at the outset of the contest. Walker back in off the bench. Mercer, Pope, grabbing it as it was on its way to the rim. A little smile on his face. Gotcha. Yep. <laughs> and in the cookie jar there, you got caught. Offensive interference on Kentucky. 3.22 left in the opening half. Four-point lead for the Wildcats. Drake is there. And Pope gets back with a rejection. And it almost paid off. Went right through the five hole to Pope. Otherwise, he's got it. Excellent work. The big fella having some kind of latter part of the first half. I mean, he's really stepped it up and very active. Looks like he's lost a few pounds from a year ago. Moving a little better. Not that he was bad last year. I mean, the numbers he posted were in about 22 minutes of playing time. 8.6 boards a game. Inside of 10, Simpkins. Almost an incredible tip by Ikezi. Transition is there. Trailer is Walker. That wasn't close. And Ikezi chases it down. Maryland needs to be careful here. Make sure they get a good, high-quality shot every trip. They're only down by four. Mm -hmm. Oh, he can take him. They should have cleared it out and let him go to work against Pope. He didn't have much space, did he, partner? Mm -hmm. In case a nice fingertip roll, didn't get it to fall, but Gary Williams likes to see that from the freshman. Turner poked away on the baseline. And don't forget, coming up at the half, the Delta Fawcett halftime report with Carl Ravage. A look at some college football. Oklahoma taking on number one Nebraska. Update on that knee injury, the sprained knee of Emmett Smith, the Cowboys, Joe Smith for the Golden State Warriors. Pope walking with it before he got the shot away with the turnover. That's an example of how conscious they are of that three-point line, Joe. I mean, he was right there, knew that he couldn't take that shot from inside of it. Simpkins beats him in the transition. And Wayne Turner just a little bit late getting back. Maryland needed it. It's been a two-minute dry spell prior to that layoff. Turner barging his way in. It'll count, and Profit with the reach in, will it? No saves on the floor. They'll wipe off the basket, call the foul on the young man that just checked in for the first time. Freshman out of Dover, Delaware, Leron Profit. Gary Williams, just like Rick Pitino, have to like what he sees as well because he's looking at a lot of players in the first half. Exactly. They've just hit a little bit of an air pocket offensively, and you have to give Kentucky some credit because they've tightened things up defensively, and Maryland has tried to play a little too fast on a few occasions, but again, only down to deuce right now. So now, Wayne Turner, freshman from Boston. He gets two. They're well over the double-digit <laughs> limit. Most feel that this young man is going to be a three-year starter at Kentucky. He'll have an opportunity. Brings excellent point guard skill. Walker tenaciously after it, loses it off his own knee. Ron Profit has it. Baseline taken away. Last touch by Shepard and Kentucky. 
So now Profit working out of the backcourt with Simpkins. Zicky Rhodes so frequently down to the baseline. He flashes in the paint. Profit, first shot of his Maryland career. And Walker with a loose one. I'll tell you what, Akizi gets his hands on a lot of balls in there. I mean, he's been very impressive in the limited time he's had. That's an offensive foul there on Polk. So Akizi is going to go to the free throw line at the opposite end. Hope I know it's Thanksgiving time, but get that chicken wing out of there. How that is illegal. That? How big was that wing? That was a turkey wing, man. <laughs> you can't use, you get open in the low post with your feet and your lower body. You can use your, you basically just hold off with your arms, but anytime you get too demonstrative with your arms, you're gonna get whistled for that foul. But that doesn't take, numbers. exactly, that doesn't take away from the work he's done overall. Couple of boards, a block, good activity. Just picked up his first foul. Leading score for Kentucky. Akizi doesn't get the free throw. Elliott kept it alive, though, and it was gathered by Rhodes. And once again, very athletic group coming up with a loose ball. Opportunity for Maryland to tie or take the lead. And it's given away. Simpkins misread the read by Elliott. A scrum at the offensive end for Kentucky. Fortunately, everybody's okay. Follows on Elliott. He was second. Edwards had a layup, so Kentucky with a break because they didn't finish. Had it go way off the mark, and now another substitution. It'll be moved back in the contest for Elliott. 48.4 left of the first half. Booth a pretty good ball handler, so they should be able to get into something decent here in the last 48 seconds. Won't be able to max out the shot clock. Booth has to be careful he doesn't pick up an additional foul already saddled with two. There's a big difference between going into the locker room with two fouls versus three. 14 points for Pope. Average date all of last year. Coming off a high, as we mentioned, though, named the SEC All-Tourney team. And now, 15 for Pope. And Pope goes over to the bench with one foul. And it'll be Prickett. The final 48.4 for Kentucky. Very quiet crowd in Springfield, Massachusetts. Simpkins double team, and it's taken away. Good pressure again, Shepard. Helping out. And the save for Epps. Edwards. Well, they could have maxed it out there, Joel. They didn't need a shot. Could have taken the last one. Simpkins leaving it for Rose. That's where clock management becomes a, a problem. Edwards took that shot. They could have actually held the ball for the last shot. Instead, they take a quick one and then get beat in transition. And points now for Rose. And they will hold on for the final shot, but have to put it in gear now. Take it away, Keezy. Doing the job at the defensive end of the floor. Very evenly played first half. As Clark said, spurtability. They both played in spurts. So we are at the intermission for Hall of Fame tip-off class. Ability, performance, and value are never optional. and Kentucky and at the break Kentucky with a two-point advantage and welcome back once again to Springfield Massachusetts Joel Myers along with Clark Kellogg at the outset of the game no problems for Maryland <laughs> beating that pressure in the backcourt of Kentucky you well, know going in you'll see it exactly the thing you have to do is consider how you're going to do it how are you going to beat the pressure you can beat it off the dribble or you can go over the top and get some easy baskets and we're going to take a look Look at Dwayne Simpkins. He's highlighted. But take a look at the Kentucky player, number 33, Ron Mercer. He's actually going to say, hey, somebody, be conscious of this guy. See, he's pointing to him right now. Somebody pick him up. Well, the official hands the ball. And I think that's um, Rodney Elliott, it looks like. And he 
throws the baseball pass perfectly to Dwayne Simpkins. Good jump stop, uses his body well. And they did that two or three times in the first half. Over the top, they beat it. And then a big, big game for the big guy in the middle for Kentucky, Mark Pope. Look at the work he does here defensively. Goes out and defends the smaller guy. Good footwork there. Now he goes over, ready to help inside. Actually challenges this shot by Akizi. And then he doesn't get the rebound, but he taps it to a teammate. That's excellent defensive work by the big fella. And he shot 48% from behind the arc last year. Well, he knocks down one here tonight. He's made one of one from behind the arc, and there it is. Had a very strong first half with 15 points. Not bad for the player that comes in this year as their best physical presence on the low blocks, who can also go outside and mix things up on the perimeter. Exactly. Well, the numbers at the break, very similar, but the big difference, Maryland with five more boards. And last year, Maryland, when they out-rebounded their opponent, they were 22-5. and five. Well, they were active early, and against the pressure, the defenders are scrambling to find people, so it gives the offensive team a chance to get to the offensive board. Tony Delk starts the second half, two fouls over the first three minutes of the game, and Tony Delk never got in the flow of the offense. He only played three minutes in the first 20. But what does that tell you about this Kentucky club? Their leading scorer from a year ago plays three minutes, gets off to a good start right there, and they still lead by a deuce at the half. And he got that quick release over 6'8", Mario Lucas for that opening bucket. So Kentucky by four. Nice ball movement here. They reversed it well, but Hip can't get the three, and Polk gets a cross-check from the back. Keith Booth. So Booth already with the foul. Is that going to be his third? Yes, third on Booth. Can't afford to have Booth in foul trouble. Led the team in PFs last year, personal foul. <laughs> Cutter Anderson, great look to Polk. Self, unselfish team play. That is basketball 101. You curl off the down screen. You go into the paint looking for your shot, knowing the defender's coming to help. Then you drop it off to the low post guy. First four of the half, belonging to Kentucky. Six-point lead. That is their largest the contest. <laughs> Rhodes couldn't get the three. It'll belong to White. Last touch by Hip on the baseline. So Kentucky ready to go at least in the first 16 seconds of the second half. And Gary Williams recognizes they came out a little bit flat at the outset and has called a quick timeout. Now is it going to be a full or is it going to be a 20? It looks to be a 20 second timeout. Even though both teams, yes, there will be a 20 second timeout. We'll keep it right here. And Pope moving well without the ball, as we saw regularly in the first half. Well, we'll come back and look at that as Gary Williams wants to talk about a little bit longer. And now that is going to be a full timeout for the Terrapins, down by six. Early in the second half, we're going to take a look at an excellent basketball play. Pin down and curl. There's the screen by Pope, the curl. You see the defender actually hip chasing Anderson. That means you curl. And now there's help that comes. Anderson knows that, feels that, and gives it to Pope, who moves nicely to the ball and catches and finishes. Outstanding assist from Derek Anderson, the transfer from Ohio State. Pope helping out with the pressure in the backcourt as well. Yeah, the folks in Columbus probably hate to see Anderson wearing the blue and white, but he felt it was the best move for him personally and truly one of the outstanding all-around players in the country. And he's coming off a major knee injury. Missed all of last year because of um, transferring and having to sit out, but he also had the knee injury he was recovering from. Rick Pitino said, as that was last touch by Walker, heads-up play there by Booth to get it off his fingertips. He said that may have been the best thing as they go with the home run ball. Booth is there. Doesn't get it close, and here comes Mercer. He's talking about the ACL for Anderson. He said now at least he's all the way back. He didn't have to rush for the injury. And the three for Delk. Watch out now. First three points of the game for Tony Delk. He only had three minutes of the first half. Maryland. They cannot afford a double-digit deficit. You were just talking about that, and you're so right. Tried to call a timeout on the sideline. They won't give it to Mario Lucas. And it goes back to Kentucky. The press pays off again. Frustrated Gary Williams. And on the opposite side, Rick Pitino. 
barking on orders. They are listening. So for Maryland, the elastic starting to unravel out of the socks. You ever had that happen to you? Doesn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> it starts unraveling, man, and it's hard to get a, get a hold of it. Second half. Maryland over three at the offensive end. Opposite for Kentucky Anderson. Great dribble penetration into the paint for the sweet J. And it was about 13, 14 feet away. That is a high percentage play for Anderson. How about the lift on the shot? Just a little vertical. Walker with the foul. Got there late. Latino has so many this year. And that's why everybody has said that this should be the national championship that has eluded Kentucky since 1978. Don't forget that the two that are in the neighborhood, Indiana and Louisville, that recruit up against Kentucky, of course, they have won two national titles since the last one by the Cats, and that really grates on Kentucky fans. The lead is up to 11. Pulling his way in, picking up the foul. Booth will go to the line to shoot two. Good aggressive move there by Booth, but he has to make sure he's under control. And again, I mentioned it in the first half, but if he would just turn and face, see, I think he'd have a much better chance of beating Pope inside. See, there you see him bodying up on each other. See, now if he turns and face, faces, he's trying to beat a taller guy with his back to the basket. And what you do is play into that taller guy's hands by doing that. And he's giving up five inches mm -hmm. when it comes to Pope. Mm -hmm. And not only that but if he turns and faces if they throw the double team at him now he can see who's open and who's available to pass to five so far this evening two-time honorable mention all ACC each of his first two years at Maryland Rhodes after it Pope got a piece of it <laughs> and it's going to be off Pope Johnny Rhodes excellent timing and he's got long arms for a guy his size so he's able to play a little bigger than he is Lucas running well without the ball, but losing. Walker. Two underneath for Kentucky is Mercer resets. And Dell is charging. Simpkins picked it up. The foul is the third on Tony Dell. Rick Pitino didn't like that call at all. Rick is constant animation, much like Gary Williams on the sideline, claiming that the defender flopped there. Off the fingertips of Rhodes. Mercer helped out with that one, getting in the way. And don't forget, Direct TV's Grade 8 starts Tuesday. Arkansas, Michigan State, the first game at 7 Eastern, UMass in Kentucky. The second half of that doubleheader, as they beat the trap of the backcourt with authority. Derek Anderson with a slam. And don't forget, on Wednesday, second half of the grade eight, Oklahoma State, Wake Forest, Kansas against Virginia. Yep, getting rid of it before he picks up the walk. And Lucas finishing after the good bounce look from Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Gary Williams had just told one of his players about making that bounce pass on the last possession. Well executed that trip. Ball on him. So Kentucky that last time beating the trap of the back door. Nice look by Antoine Walker here. Actually just threw this ball to a spot. And then Derek Anderson catches it and without needing a bounce with the punch. Burned by the home run ball. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't care for that too much, did he? Just a little. Ten-point lead for Kentucky at 48-38. Three and a half into the second half. And make it a 13-point lead. Don't let Derek Anderson get off. Explosive. He is explosive. Starting to get away from Maryland, and McCarty saves it to Anderson. Big time play by the big guy on the baseline. How about Derek Anderson? He's everywhere. He is everywhere. Defensively, he's aggressive and active. Offensively, he's made just about every play for Kentucky this half. 6'4, 195 pound junior, Louisville. So Kentucky gets it back. Hip just committed his third foul. So now Hip and Booth with three apiece for Maryland. Plenty of movement without the ball for Kentucky, and it pays off again. Epps finding his man inside. Just talked about him. Anderson running the baseline. He'll go to the line to shoot two. 
Fourth foul on him. He'll sit down. As Rodney Elliott comes back in. One of the things you like to see in a championship caliber team is their ability to seize the moment. See, they came out at the start of the second half, got going quickly, and they know they've got Maryland reeling now. So they're coming in on the pounce and doing it beautifully, executing well in the half court. Their defense is picked up. The intensity has been there, and that's, those are some of the signs you start looking for, especially here early in the season. Him sitting down with those four personal fouls. Anderson gets the second after this is the first. The lead is expanded to 14. Anderson now with eight points. And Kentucky with everything going their way now in the second half. Simpkins bodied out by Anderson who picks up the foul. While Maryland has picked up fouls with him with four, Booth with three. As we've seen and we saw it last year, Kentucky is so deep, they can afford sure. a delt to get three, and there's not a huge drop-off. Exactly. Anderson. There's, there's the catalyst for this 14-point lead, Derek Anderson. That was his third foul he picked up on the bump. Extremely impressive. Maryland has to get some shots. The pressure has just kept Maryland from getting good looks at the basket. Never been able to find a flow or any rhythm offensively in the second half. Simpkins with a good look. Akizi, and now Rhodes will go to the line to shoot two. Foul there by Brickett. Well, I like Akizi. He didn't finish there, but he shows good footwork and good hands for a big fella. We talked about him while we were taking a little bit of a break at halftime, and we were surprised because he's young basketball-wise. He's only played a little more than three years in Kizzi, but his footwork, he is sound. And good, solid hand. The kind of performance he's put up tonight, he'll certainly earn more minutes. They need every free throw. Johnny Rhodes, a senior from Dunbar High School in Washington, misses that one. Already the all-time steals leader at Maryland. Second that's the ACC all-time list. That's probably the main chink in his game. As a guy who's active and gets fouled, he's only about a 66% career free throw. You hear that slap as Booth gets his score. So now you've got Booth with four, Hip with four, and that was an easy call to make. Well, when things don't go well for you offensively, you're struggling to get shots, you're laboring to get looks, you get a little frustrated. It shouldn't be that way. Your defense is what needs to carry you throughout the year. But what happens sometimes is when things don't go well offensively, you get down, you get anxious, you start rushing, and you can pick up silly fouls at the other end. So two with four apiece now. On the bench, two starters for Maryland, Booth and Hip. Four and a half minutes in the second half. Paul Kentucky, great look inside to Walker, who draws the foul. Will they call it on Elliott? Yes. Outstanding move with the ball. Hip coming back in now as Gary Williams realizes things are getting away. Hip, who wears a number four, takes over for Elliott. Hip comes back with four. Elliott just picked up his third. And now Ron Mercer. Freshman from Nashville. Number one high school player in the nation last year. Came within six points, breaking Jerry Stackhouse's all-time record, scoring records at Oak Hill Academy in Virginia. He got one of two. The lead is ballooned to 15. Rhodes, a little hard off the window. Numbers favor Kentucky. It doesn't make any difference to Epps. And Simpkins comes up with it. Well, it's wild and woolly right now. My goodness. Mercer for showtime. Maryland just totally frustrated, I think, Joel. Just totally frustrated. When you lose a low post presence like a Joe Smith, who can create easy shots for you, and he's a guy that you can go to when you get in a pinch and you're struggling offensively. Obviously, Maryland doesn't have that, that type of presence down there, so they're really struggling to get looks, and Kentucky has just stepped into their chest and really pressured the ball. The easy finish from Mercer on that last play. It doesn't take much here. Just maintain your bounce and concentrate on the goal. 
here's a guy that was by consensus the player of the year in high school basketball last year wanted to come to a place where he wouldn't have to be the man wanted to step in and blend in and you'll have that opportunity here very mature a lot of poise and moxie for a first year guy and he's only going to get better and better Simpkins are making Stokes off the bench with a penetration Lucas with the follow that rejected by McCarty Stokes finally gets it in that was an 18 to 3 run before that basket for Kentucky to start the second half you'll see that an awful lot with Kentucky this year an awful lot those kinds of runs because of their depth and the style of play they'll force turnovers and capitalize last touch by Prickett McCarty no they say it was Mario Lucas so Kentucky will keep it in the offensive end with a fresh 35 of the shot clock. This is how bad it's been for Maryland when you see that second half shooting percentage. Remember now, shooting percentage always a function of the kind of shots you get. Where's Kentucky been shooting? Pretty much in the paint, a little bit on the edges. Maryland has struggled to get a decent look at the basket this whole second half. Rick Pitino's in it just a little. He's always in it. Him and Gary both are always in it. I mean, you could have fun just watching those two guys during the course of the game. Maryland drawing the foul as they beat it in the backcourt, created the transition game. The thing about the style that Kentucky plays, they're not going to slow it down. They're going to continue to play fast. So if they hit a dry spell and you start converting a little bit, you never are really completely out of the game with teams like Kentucky and Maryland because of how they play. Rhodes with the bonus situation. Is it safe to say, though, that Rick Pitino, since coming in at 89, revolutionized the way teams look at the three-point play in college basketball? Yeah, I would think that's a fair assessment, sure. I mean, he made it a huge part of their arsenal. As a matter of fact, typically, if they, you know, one-third of their shots will be from behind the arc over the course of the season. One-third of their field goal attempts typically will be threes. And since he's been there, they've been averaging better than 35% behind the arc. Good years, 37 up to 38%. Their losses last year, only 31% behind the arc. And that's how much it means to their offense. Oh, little drop step action. McCartney on the weak side. And it'll still belong to Kentucky. 13-08. Left in the second half as Kentucky is pulled away. They'll let it by as many as 18. Right now on top by 14. Maryland has to defend and rebound and try to get out and get into transition to get some easy baskets before Kentucky is able to set up that stifling half court deep. Maryland, the preseason pick to win the ACC this year. Little hook. No, the young fella didn't do that, Joe. Tell me he didn't go down there as a guard and throw a jump hook on somebody. What about that vertical? Man, that is one of the most difficult shots to block. The little jump hook, the little quick baby release. hook. Quick release, you extend, you get your body on the defender. It belongs to Maryland, but still that pressure is there for Kentucky. And don't forget, the college basketball, the classic tomorrow. It'll come your way. Memphis and Purdue are 1.30 Eastern. That is the first half. The second half is going to be on ESPN2. Join us as number eight, Utah takes on number two, Kansas. That'll be at four o'clock Eastern on ESPN2. The takeaway, Edwards, leaving it for Mercer. In the first time now for Maryland, not Kovarik. Kentucky is going to get a good idea about the type of team they have very early this season because their non-conference schedule has really stepped it up. We'll talk about that in just a second. Good look at the baseline. Johnny Rhodes. Maryland's not going to stop playing. They can come up with some turnovers and get some easy looks. They can get back in it. Turner walking with it. And that's one way Maryland can get back in it. Uh, Simpkins checks back in, takes over for Terrell Stokes. Stokes has done a pretty decent job in the few minutes that he's been on the floor, been aggressive and positive with the ball. Doesn't exactly look intimidated, does he? No, not at all. Very just, confident. Just a matter of conditioning for him. When you miss that much practice time, 
as much as guys hate the, the preseason practice and conditioning, you got to have it to be effective. That's what Maryland did so effectively to start the contest, finding the home run ball, throwing over the press, and Johnny Rhodes gets another deuce. He's got 16. All of a sudden, it is down to a dozen. And the ball on Ikezi, breaking across the arm of McCarty. Needs to work those feet a little bit and get around that guy inside. But as you mentioned earlier, young to the game. Showing some promise, I think. I mean, in terms of his movement, his aggressiveness. So McCarty shooting one of the bonus. The one and one situation. Simpkins looking for the transition as Rhodes on the opposite side. And taking it away is Turner. And Turner rewarded for his good play at the defensive end. But they fell asleep with me. Transition again. And Rhodes is there. He's got six straight now. Delt back into the lineup. Been on the bench in the last couple of minutes as Elliott was holding on to McCarty. And now Elliott has picked up his fourth personal foul away from him. Excellent spacing here in the two-man transition game. Anderson and Turner, see how they make the defender make a choice. Good spacing, excellent bounce pass. Again, that's basketball one-on-one, -on -one. and who's involved? Derek Anderson. One-on-one for McCarty once again. And again, failing to capitalize. Let's see if Simpkins can make a good play in the, on the break. The last couple of times he's been poor in his decision-making. Threw at the feet of Johnny Rhodes that time. And it's given away, and it belongs to Kentucky. Another turnover for Maryland. It has been a difficult start for the second half with the Terrapins. Kentucky on a roll, still leading by a dozen. We'll be right back to Springfield. For the tip-off classic, 8,999 on hand. And now we bring you back with three Maryland Terrapins already with four personal fouls. Great look inside. Derek Anderson can't finish on the reverse, but Pope is there. He's off, and Simpkins has it. Walker poked it away. It'll still belong to the Terrapins. Boy, they're really hawking Dwayne Simpkins. Really chasing him down from behind, cutting and off, cutting off his penetration in the paint. The last thing you want to do is rush and force things against Kentucky. That's exactly what they want you to do. You gotta be strong with them. Yes, it's a vicious off the bench. The young man from Lithuania. Three point threat. The cutter Rhodes. Derek Anderson picking up the foul. Free throws the rest of the way for both teams. One and one situation now for Maryland. Take a look at Anderson. Active, aggressive, always trying to get into the passing lane. Good move by Johnny Rhodes there as he felt the pressure. Rodney Elliott did a nice job as Anderson picks up his fourth foul. But Elliott did a nice job pump faking that initial pass that allowed Johnny Rhodes to go back door and draw the foul inside. Rhodes hitting the free throw. And all of a sudden, Maryland could get back into it oh, after sure. the stripe as well. They're only down by 11. Trailed us by as many as 18. Form at the line. Ten point lead for Kentucky. Break that back door trap easily. Delt <laughs> takes advantage of the situation. Rick Patino, knowing that Delt's best position at the collegiate game is a score and a two guard, but determined to play him at the one. Ikezi blows the jam. Yes, it's a vicious there to give him a break in the corner. Can't afford to miss those, though. Got up there just a little. And now Akizi is going to the line as Pope picks up the foul. Nice job there to come right back to the young fella. He took his eye off the goal and missed that flush, but stayed active and got himself another opportunity inside. Yep, took his eye off it at the last minute. Yeah, you never like to do that. It's okay, young fella. Get in there and make those free throws now. Just a baby. 18-year-old from Nigeria. To the line to shoot two. Oh. 
paint that was glass a, everywhere on that was that a one. wedge shot I think wasn't it yeah that was a little tight Brickett into the lineup now for Pope as Pope picked up his third foul so Pope on the bench with three Delk on the floor with three and Anderson has four for Kentucky three with four for Maryland Kip, Elliott, and Booth. There you go, big fella. That's it. Well, point deficit with that second free throw as Kentucky has the ball and the lead. Delk looked for his second consecutive three. He's got it. He's got three threes in the second half now. 13 for Delk. He's making up for lost time, isn't he? Played only three minutes in the first half. Senior from Brownsville, Tennessee. Booth with the move. Rikizi wasn't ready for the bounce pass, though. Well, that pass was a little late there, Joe. Just a touch late in getting to the big fella. Actually, Booth had a chance, I think, to take a shot. You brought up a good point, though, with Dell. Spent most of his collegiate career at the off-guard spot, making the transition over to the lead guard spot at this stage of his career. Rhodes. Patino thinking that may give him a better chance to be, be drafted at the next level, if he can show folks that he can do that. But he's showing us that he can certainly stroke it <laughs> from behind the arc, which he's done certainly the last two years for Kentucky. His coach giving him, though, every opportunity mm -hmm. you bring up because he's only at 6'1". Right. Being off guard in the NBA, 6'1's tough. Right. Although the game has changed a bit at the next level in that you have some guys that uh, are more like lead guards. They're good enough just to handle the ball and get somebody into an offense, but basically their strength is still shooting and, and creating for themselves. And with certain personnel, you know, that kind of that kind of backcourt player can be effective. Tony Delk, 17-point average, their leading scorer last year. Warming up here in the second half after he saw only three minutes in the first half because he got two early fouls. Kentucky can just throw so many bodies at you in different combinations and looks. Now Delk is the all-time leading three-point shooter mm -hmm. at Kentucky with those three threes. He needed two coming in to surpass the mark of Derek Miller. Travis Ford right behind Miller at 190. Miller at 191. And now Delk at 192 with his three threes here. So the free throws are there. And Maryland down by 17. 20-second timeout. And what a spark Delk has provided in the second half for Rick Pitino. We're talking about the Direct TV Grade 8. It is a phenomenal eight. Arkansas, Michigan State, 7 o'clock Eastern. That'll start on Tuesday night. UMass, Kentucky, second half of that opening night doubleheader from the Palace in Auburn Hills, Michigan. And then on Wednesday, don't forget, Oklahoma State against number 11, Wake Forest, to number 2, Kansas, taking on number 17, Virginia. Second half of the doubleheader on Wednesday night. Direct TV Grade 8, Tuesday and Wednesday nights, right here on ESPN. Create a turnover as Kentucky forced the turnover again with the great pressure. They're always fresh because Patino can substitute freely and they're always going to be quick and athletic. They're not real tall, but they're long. Fallon Walker trying to jockey for position with the ball in the air. Antoine Walker, the sophomore from Chicago, is second. 926 left in the second half. Kentucky started the second half, the first eight minutes with an 18 to 3 spurt. That has been the difference as they were only separated by two at the intermission, 37-35. Now finding all those minutes for the players. Rick Patino has said, hey, does in the NBA and you use 9-10 guys, but he's got 10-11 at least he can use here. Mm -hmm. Separating and dividing up those minutes is going to be interesting. Both with the first of two. You have a chance to figure out how to do it against some very tough non-conference opponents. Starting with tonight, Maryland, they'll see um, UMass, they'll see Indiana, they'll see Louisville, they'll see Georgia Tech. Both teams getting together with UMass. Preseason number seven. Seven points now for Booth. Rickett got the great position on Lucas. That's just beautiful execution. Beautiful execution. Great spacing. They basically had four out and one in. A little high-low. Mm-hmm. And got, got real busy inside there. Here you take good ball movement here, spacing. Around the horn. 
And then right down from high to low. Frickett able to get, get it up and down. Gets the three-point play. There was some consideration as Hip comes back in with four personal fouls to possibly redshirt Frickett mm -hmm. before his senior season. But Rick Pitino felt that he may be in need of a little more rebounding as Simpkin gets away from Mercer. And inside it's Rhodes to finish it up in the transition game. So he decided to go with Prickett. Don't redshirt him. Let him have his senior season because a couple of years ago, Prickett led this team in rebounding. He's having a game. Mercer not close and it's out of bounds over the backboard. Or do we have a foul? We have a foul underneath. It'll be all Walker again trying to get the position underneath. Prickett had knee surgery back in June. And uh, that too was part of the reason for thinking about red shirting him, but he's recovered nicely and gives them another big active body to throw at the opposition. As soon as Maryland got within 10, Delft came alive, hit the two threes. Adios amigo. <laughs> and it's now at 16 again for the Wildcats. Tough second half for Simpkins. Under heat every yeah. step of the way. Big time duress. Seven points so far this evening. The senior from Fort Washington, Maryland, the Bath High School. Got a 10 point average last year in 33 minutes. Two free throws making a 14 point deficit now for Maryland. Still plenty of time, 8.50 left in the contest. Unselfish play. Dell for Mercer. This will start falling for Mercer. Don't forget it's only his first collegiate game. Simpkins. And Delk underneath. Brickett without the ball. And Delk found him. Solid movement on the baseline. Delk almost with the steal. Constant motion. And pressure. Rick Pitino has to love what he's seen from Tony Delk in the second half. Real leadership. Yeah, he's packed a lot of production into limited playing time. You see there, you see four red shirts, actually five. And Prickett loose alone on the baseline. That's wide on the field goal try by McCartney. <laughs> I knew I'd get a pigskin line from you. Well, we had the inadvertent flag earlier. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> One per half, like the 20 second but timeout. I, I agreed with you on that slam earlier in the game where they called the foul on Kentucky on a great lob down low. Nothing easy for Maryland, especially here in the second half. A couple of over the tops against the pressure this half, but otherwise, everything has been challenged. Lucas kept it alive. Yeah, Maryland wants to drive everything. At some point, you have to just kick it around the horn and knock down some jump shots. Allen Edwards accepting that charge. Picked up by Rhodes. The foul on Rhodes as we go to the timeout. Kentucky in control, leading by 16. Most pro teams play 10 players. And what you do is you, you, you best three or four players play anywhere from 28, 27 minutes a game. The other guy's playing anywhere from 13 to 15 minutes a game, and you run it like a, like a pro team. Rick Bettino discussing earlier all the players and dividing up those minutes because he has so much talent. And there you see the minutes. And you've got Pope at 23, everybody else in double digits other than Delk and Epps, although Delk has more points than minutes played at this point. He's been outstanding. They need a big year from Pope. Mm -hmm. McCarty, a better perimeter player, as Shepard beats the pressure. Easy bucket for Kentucky out of the timeout. He really has to frustrate, frustrate Gary Williams when he sets something up. Pressure in the backcourt. Rhodes. Oh, oh scoop, yeah. The scoop works. He just keeps playing. But it's been all inside or nothing for Maryland. No perimeter shots at all. They really hurt themselves, I think, trying to drive it too much. McCarty indecisive. Randy picks up the walk. 
And this is a good test for Maryland. I mean, this is a good barometer both for both of these teams. I mean, you get a chance to really see some things you can work on and improve on, areas that you need to pay attention to as you get ready for your conference schedule. Yep. And McCarty with a rebound. Stokes getting valuable minutes. Cricket coming up short on that drive. Real good minutes for the first college game for Terrell Stokes. And I think that will only continue and improve as he gets into better basketball shape. Again, he missed a good portion of the preseason practice time with back spasm. Lucas for three. McCarty loses the handle. And when we talk about Stokes, consider the opponent. Quality time against a great opponent. College football all begins with college game day. Chris Fowler and the gang tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock Eastern. And then a doubleheader on ESPN. Penn State, Michigan State at 3.30. Second half of the Twin Bills, Syracuse and Miami. Two old rivals going at it at the Orange Bowl at 7.30 Eastern. But don't forget to join us at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. It all starts with college game day. 6.35 and counting. Left in the second half. All Kentucky in the second 20. Booth who's held by McCarty from behind. Booth will go to the line. And he'll be shooting too. So McCarty picking up his third. You see the guys working inside. Booth sealing McCarty. Gary, Gary looks like he's ready to bounce out there. <laughs> he's always in that crouch. It was fun talking to him this, this afternoon after the shoot around. Basically said, we've got a tough preseason schedule, pre-conference schedule. We, uh, we see Kentucky tonight. We'll see UCLA. We'll see UMass. And, but I, I want to win them all, <laughs> is what he said. That's the attitude. I mean, and it's in a conference that was really hit by the NBA track, right, the right. ACC. They lost a number of guys. I think it was probably somewhere between seven and ten first-round picks from the ACC this year. And yet it still will be a strong conference. They may not have... Uh, more than one or two teams that eke themselves into the top ten, but in terms of trying to pick a winner in that thing, heck, I mean, you've got some teams that have a, about five teams that have a little legitimate chance to win the conference. Lucas on the assist from Jessica Vicious. The foul for Shepard. And now Mario Lucas going to the line to shoot two. Well, it's only a 14-point deficit with 6.08 left in the contest, and as Kentucky has showed us, over the last few years, you can't count anybody out because of the three-pointers. Exactly, and Maryland, though, has not shown any ability to knock down the three. Actually, they haven't really looked at the three-point shot this half. They were only one of seven in the first 20 mm -hmm. minutes from behind the arc. As Rick Pitino gets ready to get Tony Delk back into the game. Good move. He's been their best player in the second half by far. Well, wait a minute now. How about Derek Anderson? Yeah. Derek Early Anderson. Early in the half. First half especially, but... Tony Delkin, we talked about it when we were with that last break because of the looks he gave to Prickett. You can see him getting comfortable, even in the second half of the game and the latter stages of this game, in that lead guard position, mm -hmm. his court vision. Oh, high low from another big guy, McCarty. The little guy won't get it to you, partner. I promise you, whenever I touch it, I'll get it to you. <laughs> I love the big guys who work hard to get it. And they just Look at him it. working inside against Booth. Using the lower body here. Not really you See, good job there by Pope. Using that lower body, giving a good target hand. Gets himself to the foul line. We started to talk a little bit about the ACC conference. And you know, heck, I really think there are four or five teams that have a legitimate chance to win it. Maryland is one of them. North Carolina, Georgia Tech with Stephon Marbury. If they keep Drew Barry healthy, and they've got some other good solid players there. Uh, Wake Forest with Tim Duncan. There's a team, Florida State, you know, talking to, to Gary Williams earlier, Florida State, a team that, 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 that bears watching because of the talent level. So I think it's going to be very competitive top to bottom in the ACC. Glad you mentioned Tim Duncan. 15-point lead, Pope now with 19 points. There's a man. The trailer is Lucas. Jessica Vicious with an outstanding look. Hit the trailer perfectly and put him in a good position. Down to 13, the deficit now for Maryland. Still plenty. When I say plenty, plenty of time at 540, but you better cover the backyard live on the weak side. McCarty with the slam.
Booth leading the three on two. Mm, nice take. Nice take there. This is the way the game started. We haven't seen that much of it in the second half. Epps charging his way in. Simpkins taking the blow. Last look at the back door lob. The defense of Maryland way too high here, and that allows McCarty to go behind the defense. Just get it up near the rack, and Edwards does. Walter takes care of the rest. This is where you, picking up that foul as Anderson comes back into the this game. This is where you would like to see Kentucky pull it out a little bit, reverse the ball, just kind of pick Maryland apart because you know Maryland has to gamble. They're on the bottom side of the scoreboard, fighting the clock, and the, and the Wildcats just have to make sure they're patient and get the shot they want instead of what Maryland might make available early in the shot clock. Simpkins shooting two, and Patino upset because now they have an opportunity to score without the clock moving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trailed by as many as 18. And now it is down to only 11 at 78-67. Cap speeding the pressure. into the air made it look easy and Pope with 21 points back to the free throw line very solid fundamentally in the Pope now see he's got a basic cable post game okay <laughs> this is just basic there's nothing flashy about this catch it balance ball fake strong to the rim I mean nothing flashy at all about that but very effective plenty of clarity and definition <laughs> five minutes left in the contest and I've got to get up on Clark Kellogg's premium package you know we've got the direct TV grade 8 coming up on ESPN <laughs> we're going to go to different dishes before it's all over <laughs> no, we'll just stay with those three levels I like it hope make it 20 points for folks five boards four blocks very impressive night so I'll be the first this year to say that the pontiff is in the house 21 now for Pope. <laughs> Continuing with the pressure is Kentucky. They do it so well. Just run waves at you. 14-point lead for the Wildcats. Jessica Vicious, the runner. Big fella, there's a Keezy. Working hard at the offensive end. And he's going to go to the free throw line to shoot two as McCarty picked up another foul. That was the fourth on McCarty. I think Maryland has about a minute and a half, two minutes tops, to break into that comfort zone of Kentucky, meaning they've got to get it to single digits. And then maybe the complexion of things could change, but as long as Kentucky is able to maintain this double-digit cushion. Will it ever come down? Everything but there. What is so difficult about when you think you've gotten back into it against Kentucky? Mm -hmm. Dell hits a three, right. Epps hits a three. Now you got it down to eight or nine, and all of a sudden it's back to 14 or 15. Spurt ability. They have it. Ikezi gets the second. 4.43 left. 13 point lead for Kentucky. Better pressure. Stokes coming back in for Jessica Vicious. Losing it, keeping it alive for Epps. Delk tried to call a timeout. Possession arrow belongs to Maryland. Gary Williams going a little offensive defensive substitution here now as he brings Sharunas back into the ball game. The Akapatuka, I thought you were going to say. Jessica Vicious. Sharunas, Jessica Thank you, Vicious partner. back in. It's early. Got to love college hoops. Well, Sharun has told me just to refer to him as Sharun. Well, you heard us talking earlier about his last name, and he came out with a grin. Delk sweeps it away from Jessica Vicious. Delk can't finish. And a foul underneath is going to be on Elliott on the shot. Big time play by Tony Delk at the defensive end. 
Elliott is gone, picking up his fifth foul. So hip with four will check back in for Gary Williams. Delk goes about probably a 36, 37 sleeve length, and he uses it all right here to come from behind and deflect it and then head the other way. I actually don't know if it's quite that long, but for his size, his arms are very, very long. Good point, though, for someone that plays at that position, and he's only 6'1". Mm -hmm. He plays a lot longer because of his wingspan. Sure. He's got a good wingspan. Pope shoots two. Perfect at the free throw line tonight. Make it seven for his seven now. For Mark Pope, the senior from Bellevue, Washington. So important to have guys that will be getting fouled to be good free throw shooters. And he's their best low post player. So that means he's going to get opportunities to get to the line. And when you can make them, I mean, that does so much for your team. It allows you to get into your pressure. In addition, obviously, to putting more points on the board. A parade as Walker took a spill in the side. Nice looked look. like he may have turned an ankle. And then McKeezy couldn't get it. And Pope got a piece of it down low. And Anderson's going to go to the free throw line. There's Antoine Walker. He slid down trying to make a seal on the sideline, trying to get it away from Simpkins. He's trying to walk off of it. looked like he just turned his ankle, hopefully. Hate to see that early. Iowa. Up by 10 early on UConn. One of the favorites in the Big Ten, battling one of the favorites in the Big East. Iowa, a team that has depth and plays a similar type of game as what we've seen tonight up and down, full court pressing. 15 point lead for Kentucky with Anderson going to the strike. Real difficult second half to get a feel for things offensively. Kentucky, it's been a little bumpy. Kentucky had the first six, seven minutes and they just dominated with the second 20 minutes of play. And they did it basically with their defense. Got some shots to go down from Delk, and then Anderson made some plays, and their defense was just stifling. Anderson with the foul. So Jessica Vicious going to the line. And now Derek Anderson has fouled out of his first game as a Kentucky Wildcat. MVP of the U.S. Olympic Festival during the summer of 93. We talked about it at the very top of the telecast. Patino loves what he brings to the pressure defense. He is so quick. Mm -hmm. Good solid effort at both ends for Derek Anderson. They don't have enough room on that bench. <laughs> got some players over there. And they seem to be an unselfish bunch. I mean, you talk to Rick Patino, and he talks an awful lot about how nicer group this is to coach and how there doesn't seem to be any type of selfishness and that's going to be key because these guys are going to have to find their roles and uh, if they do that they'll be hard to handle you mentioned the Italian trip over the summer did a world of good for this team chemistry wise and they're on top by 14 with inside help from Ovella Harrington against the strong agile front line of the Arizona Wildcats in the preseason NIT championship game next on ESPN. And welcome back once again to Springfield, Massachusetts. Joel Myers along with Clark Kellogg. Kentucky in control every step of the way after they only led by two at the break. 18 to three spurred up the first seven minutes of the second half. And they have been in total control. Not have problems with the press from Maryland. Hope has been the key, the big man inside. He was a factor early. Coming on strong late again. A big plus in the second half. Inside of 10. First time for Kentucky to make that Walker is rejected. A Keezy coming over. Simpkins swatted at. Foul coming up on Kentucky. Well, we've got an opportunity. Let's head back to the studio and check in with Carl Ravage. Carl? All right, Joel. Thank you. Just want to alert everybody that Arizona Georgetown, the NIT final for Madison Square Garden, set to tip. We'll keep you up to date as Maryland Kentucky wraps up, and then we'll get you back out there. Joel? All right, Carl. Antoine Walker just picked up his fourth personal foul. Sending Simpkins to the line to shoot two. 
two impressive teams squaring off in that NIT championship, both Arizona and Georgetown, and look to be in, in midseason form. Tough night there. You see the seven turnovers by Simpkins. Only three dimes. He averaged five assists a game last year, and they said one of the things they really needed to improve, improve upon with Simpkins was two to one, the assist to turnover mm -hmm. ratio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he overpenetrated an awful lot tonight. Overpenetrated. Tried to take it in there too deep and ended up getting himself in trouble. And if he looks at the, the film and tape of this one, he'll be able to make some adjustments and try to stop at that foul line, pull up a little more than he did tonight. So the foul on Maryland. Picking up that foul. It was Stokes. And now Epps going to the line to shoot two with 319 to play. Rick Pitino likes to have Epps in the game at this juncture because he's an excellent free thrower. And you know he's going to have the ball. Teams gambling, they're over the limit. He'll get fouled and he'll make most of his free throw. Get two clutch ones. 19 seconds left of the win over Arkansas in the SEC Tourney Championship game last year. As usual, we just jinxed him with, with our comments about his free throw marksmanship. Rhodes with the banker. 11 point lead for Kentucky. Shepard saves it. And now he'll go to the line to shoot two as he's hit by Lucas. Kentucky not exactly pulling it back. <laughs> <laughs> They've pretty much got one speed and it's full throttle. You take a look at the shooting. Indicative of the defense by Kentucky. Maryland only 38%. Rhodes just keeps on ticking. Just plays the game. And Kentucky, excellent shooting by way of ball movement and Pope inside, Delk and Anderson outside. Still, this one has not been put on ice yet, Joel. Three minute mark. Only an 11 point lead. Make it 12 now. Shepard gets the second. Rhodes. It's a two-pointer, well inside the arc. It's down to ten. That is clo the closest they've been over the last seven, eight minutes. And now Rhodes with the steal, and it's eight. Plenty of time left with two minutes and 43 seconds remaining. And a timeout has been called. A brand-new ball game as far as Maryland is concerned. Eight-point lead for Kentucky. So we come right back to Springfield. Steps in with the pilfer, and then he'll finish things off with the punch. He has been steady. Take a look at Gary Williams. There he is, calling it. There he is. He's ready to roll now. They're back in it. Only an eight-point lead for Kentucky. Well, partner, you said with 4.43 left, the next two minutes important. They've got to get it down to single digits. You were profitable. It was exactly two minutes when they went to the timeout. Well, the thing is, it changes the complexion of the game a little bit. Kentucky has been able to do what they wanted to do most of this half. Now you get a little pressure, and it doesn't come as easily now. The steal for Stokes, who almost throws it off the knee of Lucas. You need to be aggressive and get a good shot. That's the key here if you're Maryland. Simpkins, a blocking foul coming up. Prickett came in late. Or make it Pope, rather, came in late. Boy, Simpkins bailed out there. Could have gone the other way. Actually, I think two guys bumped him. One who stepped in to take the charge and somebody from behind. Simpkins, an excellent free thrower. Here you take a look. He wants to take McCarty. Not a bad decision there. And there's Pope. Boy, that was very close. Yeah, pretty solid position. Seems like established it. position. 84% mm -hmm. free throw shooter last year, hitting the first of two. Second best free throw shooter in the ACC, Dwayne Simpkins. All of a sudden, a seven-point ball game when it looked like Kentucky was ready to wrap it up. But remember, we mentioned it a couple of times. Because of the style that both of these teams employ, big leads can be chopped up in a hurry. Because teams like this usually never really slow it down. They still want to play at a fairly fast pace, and that gives the team trailing a chance to get back into the game. Speed lineup on the floor for Gary Williams. He's got his two point guards out there, Stokes and Simpkins at the same time. Exactly two minutes to play. 
Six point lead for Kentucky, using some clock finally. Inside of 15 on the shot clock. a foul. It'll be a walk. And Rick Pitino wants a timeout. Kentucky is not comfortable playing a slowdown half-court game. And you saw evidence of it right there. They pulled it out and basically didn't know what to do with it once McCarty got it way out on top with only 10 left on the shot clock. So a Kentucky timeout with a minute 42 left when we come back. Maryland with the ball, trailing by only six. Welcome to Madison Square Garden. 8-5 Georgetown early. Michael Dickerson of Arizona is injured. We'll keep you updated. Hoyas early, Joel Myers. So bad break very early mm -hmm. for the Arizona Wildcats. Georgetown on top by three as we bring you back to the Hall of Fame tip-off classic. Kentucky leading by six over Maryland. Maryland has the ball, though. Minute 42 left. Kentucky led by as many as 18 in the second half. And Rhodes has been the key. The young man with the ball now. Career-high 30 points this evening. Running Rhodes on the curl. And the ball taken away. Tried to drop it to Rhodes. Needed another bounce to create a better angle there. Mario Lucas needed one more dribble to go towards the baseline. Then he's got an easier angle to enter that ball into the post. Kentucky calling the 22nd timeout after the huge steal by Epps. So you take a look here. See, if he takes one more dribble, he tries to reach and make that pass instead of putting himself in a position to make it easier by dribbling down towards the baseline. Good work, though, by Epps to get around and in front of Rose. Frustrating, though, for a coach. The second time we've seen it tonight where mm -hmm. they just failed to execute out of a timeout. That'll happen early in the season. I mean, those kinds of kinks will be ironed out as you get more game tested. That doesn't make it any easier to take as a coach, but that's the reality of it. Yeah. Picking up the reach-in foul and the dribble penetration. Now, Delk only a 67% career free throw. So let's see how he steps up and attacks these two. Iowa plus 16 over UConn. Louisville coming back without Samaki Walker. This game very early in the season, of course, has reminded us once again what's so great about college basketball. Don't go anywhere. Hang on in. Delk misses the first of two. Timeouts remaining. Two full for Maryland. Only one left for Kentucky. He gets the second. He makes it a three possession game. That was a big free throw. Mm -hmm. Seven point lead. Maryland's got to get a shot. You can't have any empty trips now. You can't use a lot of time either. Keezy wasn't ready for it. We talked about the deep penetration of Simpkins earlier. I really think he's over penetrated an awful lot tonight. And again, it'll be a good teaching point for, for the coaching staff as they review this to show Dwayne that. And then he'll make adjustments. He's a smart young man, good point guard. Been a little overzealous with the penetration tonight, I think. Break the press. Delph not wasting any time. That's Kentucky not pulling it back out. Nine-point lead. Tony Delk with another two. He's got 16. All 16 in the second half. Delk with the block to call the foul with Simpkins move to the basket. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. So Delk with the foul. And now a chance for Maryland to score points with the clock stop. 45.5 seconds remaining. Don't forget, Bob Carpenter, Bill Raftery standing by. That is tomorrow on ESPN. UConn and Syracuse coming up next on ESPN. Arizona-Georgetown, the championship game. The preseason NIT at the Garden. Simpkins. 
is up keep his mates close 10 of 10 at the free throw line second best we talked about it in the ACC at the stripe last year this young man only averaged eight shots a game last year so you're looking at the classic point who doesn't look for his own shot all that often mm -hmm. 12 for 12 at the line seven point lead for Kentucky and back to Barrett out of Greensboro North Carolina a junior coming in for defensive purposes situational substitution now but they break it they got the two on one and Kelly does it so well <laughs> he sure does excellent control now twice on the pull up J in the lane when you think about pulling it out and using some time but again Kentucky's posture is attack 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 Eric with the foul Delft to the line to shoot two and 26.6 remain and Kentucky will leave with a victory in the 17th annual Hall of Fame tip-off classic you take a look at Dell. Anytime you've got the defenders backpedaling and you've got the ball, you've got the advantage. Delft that time under excellent control looked off the defender and finished it off in the paint. Delft, all time leader in three pointers now, setting a new Kentucky record with three three pointers here in the second half, overtaking the previous mark set by Derek Miller. Rick Pitino never stops teaching. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. Delk gets one of two. Ten-point lead for the Wildcats. Simpkins for three. Oh. Guardy kept it alive. Polk leads the break. And Polk will finish the break. It's another spurt at the end of the game. It was a game of spurts. Kentucky took control of this contest early in the second half with a huge 18-3 spurt. Akizi. Nice soft hands inside. Freshman from Nigeria. One more try for Delk. Why not? take advantage of it. So that is it. As Rick Pitino and Kentucky beat Gary Williams and Maryland. The final score, a 12-point victory for the Wildcats, 96-84. For Clark Kellogg, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. Let's go now to the Garden. Bob Carpenter and Bill Rathbury. Gentlemen.